What's up, guys? It's KB. Make sure you subscribe to the Underground Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. Click the bell icon down below so you don't miss a single video from us. And thanks for tuning in to another video from Underground Sports Philadelphia. Now let's get into it. Philadelphia, baby. You're going to love it. Best sports fans in the world. Actually, the worst, but that's what makes them the best. Ghana is like typically does very well at the World Cup. They don't have like as strong of like a, a team as they, they've had like in recent like cycles. Mm -hmm. Portugal's still good, although they have like some key players injured. South Korea is good. Uruguay's like they're good, but kind of on the last. Like they have Suarez and Cavani as like their last kind of hurrah, but they're not at their best. But they're still that's like still a solid team. But then Brazil, Brazil could win. Cameroon is like probably one of the better like probably like top two like them and senegal are the best like african teams serbia is like low-key nice switzerland like always does well like they made it far in the euros they beat france in the euros like a good team then we got our fucking group <laughs> england iran u.s and wales we'll see they should be all right right it's like, it's like a lot of it is going to depend on like especially the first game we have uh play wales it's it's just you win that and like your chance of going through is probably like you know goes from like 30 percent to like 60 you mm -hmm. know, like honestly like that's that's the crucial one um and you have i think we play iran the last match yeah because i think england's in the middle on black friday really like you got to get like you gotta get at least like two positive results. You gotta at least win and draw one to have a shot. You can lose a game, but you can't lose. Like you lose to Wales, and it's like you know, just pack the bags, honestly. But we could make it out. But also, yeah. like any one of honestly, like England's not been amazing, like coming into the tournament, um, and they have like the capacity to disappoint, but. Mm -hmm. Really, like, any of Iran, U.S., and Wales could make it out, and it wouldn't be shocking, shocking. you know? Like, they're, they're all actually, like, pretty even, which is better for us. Like, right. You know, at least, like, we're on, like, level ground, not, like, being underdogs too much. All right. I think we are all set. What is going on, everybody? Welcome in to episode number 480 of Underground Sports Philadelphia. It's KB and Matt coming at you with the Say La Vie to the World Series and Red October edition of the pod. Uh, we've got Sixers, Flyers, Union, Eagle stuff to also touch on. Plus, stick around for the end for the true sickos because, you know, we talk about Survivor 43 uh, at the end of the show with our final segment. Uh, we'll be announcing our 3K Twitter follower giveaway. That might be the last milestone we make it to before Elon takes Twitter away from everybody. So we'll see what happens uh, as we continue going. But keep following us on the socials at UndergroundPHI on Twitter and Instagram. Follow Matt on Twitter at Matt Castorina. Follow me at KBIZZL311. You'll know it's us because we don't have a $8 blue check mark. Um, so follow us there. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast feed on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever the hell you get your podcasts. Leave those five star ratings and reviews. It goes a long way for more people finding the show, helps us keep growing and uh, delivering the best content we possibly can to you. And of course, subscribe to the Underground Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. That's where you get full video episodes of every single podcast on our network. Any original video content we do also goes on that channel. We got some big stuff coming up with the NLL right around the season, with the World Cup on the horizon. The more YouTube subscribers we get, uh, the easier it's going to be for us to pull off some dope shit for you guys. So YouTube.com slash at Underground Sports Philadelphia. That'll bring you right to the channel. Smash that subscribe button, the like button, ring the bell icon so you don't miss any of the videos we're pumping out for you, and comment down below your thoughts on anything that we talk about on tonight's show. Uh, big shout out to our merch partners, PHI Apparel Company. Uh, they're the best in the game, and we should have our official merch on the website by the end of this week. That is uh, the goal, I've been told, from our merch partners over at PHI Apparel Co. But they 
are the most unique and they provide the most unique uh, designs and high quality clothing for the great fans of Philadelphia with their original designs for all. There's no doubt you'll stand out in the crowd. Apparently we sold two shirts this week, man. We're back on that merch okay. grind. Let's go. Uh, I'm watching The Wire, so I'm a little like... We're out here. I'm, I'm business focused. <laughs> Listeners, you guys can use our promo code UNDERGROUND for 10% off any apparel when you shop online at phiapparel.co. That's phiapparel.co. And use code UNDERGROUND for 10% off any apparel. And uh, I was also told today, Matt, we might have hats coming to the store with our merch as well. So... Buckle up. Black Friday, right around the corner. Save your pennies. Go digging in the couch for some quarters. And uh, use that code UNDERGROUND for 10% off any apparel order. Shout out to our sponsors who make this show happen. Main Auto LLC, Security 21 Security Systems, Paul J. Gillespie Incorporated, and the Dental Wellness Center of Vineland. What's going on, Matt? Living a dream. <laughs> Uh, the World Series has come to an end since the last time you and I recorded together. Phillies lose it four games to two. Um, the floor is yours for your thoughts, your 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 parting thoughts to the 2022 Phillies. Um, thanks for the ride. It was uh, it was fun. It was truly a pleasure. Um, I don't feel that bitter about it. Um, uh, I think because it was unexpected. It doesn't feel, you know, 2009 felt much worse. I'll say that. Yeah. Um, despite the fact, I actually think I hate the Astros more than I, <laughs> I hate the Yankees. But um, that felt like much more crushing in that, like, you really felt like, I don't know. It, I think just the expectations were different. Yeah, I think um, 09 was like a missed opportunity. This feels like a missed opportunity as well because, you know, I, I think you never know when you'll be back on this stage. Right. Um, not going to say, like, the Phillies got lucky, you know, right? But, like, you just don't know when things are going to break for you the right way, you know, and, and that's in some ways what happened with the Phillies this year. They got hot at the right time and, um, you know, just played great baseball you know, throughout the entire playoffs. And I mean, still, even though played well, it's not like they embarrassed themselves against the Astros. Um, they sort of fizzled out at the end of the series, which is disappointing, but I think gives the team at least some like something constructive to build on now. Um, I think it's a great like marker point. You know, we talked so much in like June and July what it would mean for this team to be like back in the playoffs. Um, and we got way more than that. We got a world series run out of it. I think you got like a lot of people to buy back in. I, you know, I'd be shocked if we're not back to, you know, high thirties, low forties for attendance, you know, next year, rather than like the, the 19, 20,000 mm -hmm. we're doing in like the, you know, like the Friday nights of summer, you know, non, you know, dollar dog nights type of stuff. Right. Like I, uh, I think a lot of people like, got reinvigorated again, fell back in love with the Phillies. And, and that's, that to me, it, you know, obviously a World Series ring would have been great. <laughs> really wanted it. Um, and again, it, it stings because you don't, you really don't know when you'll be back. Um, you know, if you had said to 2009 me that the Phillies would not be back for 13 more years, um, that would have come as a little bit of a surprise to me. But, you know, you, you just never know when, when that was actually your last shot. Um, I guess the good thing is this team conceivably should be back at least in the playoffs next year and i think you know if you're, if you're looking like autopsy of this season as a whole it seems so much better and so much different um post girardi and, and with rob thompson that um and this was something that annoyed me throughout the whole playoffs he was like this 87 win team it's like yeah but like with like if we weren't if we hadn't been like actively sandbagged by a bad manager for the first month and a half of the season you know we have we had just as good a, a uh like record as the Cardinals would have been, you know, nobody would have been stinking it up if the Cardinals say. Who knows if things right. go as good? Like it could have been a, a three-team race for the NL East title. Yeah, it, exactly. Because I mean, think how many like easy wins the Mets got off on yeah. us. You know? like, like we were seven games under five hundred at Memorial Day. Right. Um, the fact that we went from that to being in a World Series is impressive, but um, also I mean, it, it means nothing. <laughs> you know, like it. That's what sucks about it is as much fun as it was. Um, it just doesn't have the same legacy and standing that topping off of the championship does. Um, I do think those like far as teams that have made runs, this will be a team that has that kind of lasting uh, memory. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, it. I, like I said, it, it gave us a, a lot of good times. I think a lot of good stuff. Um, I, I think to like, if you're talking about now turning the page towards free agency, 
do think making a deep playoff run and, and showing like, Hey, like if you come and like, you're able to play in October, Bryce Harper can fucking carry you to a yep. world series, you know, like, and if you just have that extra little bit to get you over the line, I think we've, we've learned a lot about what we need to be doing in the regular season. We can't depend on, uh, Nolan Wheeler, so we can't ride them you know, yeah. for six months. Can't be and, exclusively on their shoulders. Right, because I think, you know, the, the biggest issue for them, and this is a concern of mine in the World Series, is that you could tell that they were exhausted. Yes. Um, and not it, not through any fault of their own. I think any, really, they've been asked to do historic amounts of, of lifting. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we've quite touched on it enough, just how much, <laughs> you know, Wheeler and Nola have pitched uh, and, and how those, they've been high stakes too. It's not like, you know, um, because because every time even the regular season these guys are up they've been the like the trusted source mm-hmm. for for wins so um, yeah it sucks it, it it totally does but I am looking forward to now to um, you know looking at the winter and 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 going through and like getting sicko mode about uh, as a uh, as friend of the show you know ball would say like it's gonna be slop season yes. which is very nice. Um, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to that and, and like pursing through that. I think really what the Phillies need when what showed, I, I think, throughout the, the World Series and, and the difference, I think the real difference between us and the Astros was that that level of starting pitching that mm-hmm. they could hit that we just couldn't. Um, so if you add like another, at least like one more, like doesn't have to be elite, right? But if you get like just a dominant starter, um, you had a third guy like that and then you have Ranger, I think was very impressive. I think Ranger is the biggest development from this postseason run that you and I have been Team Ranger since he got called up, and now, like, he showed that, like, he can be a legitimate number three, and on a very, very good team, if you add that third, you know, star, him as your number four is unbelievably ideal. Yeah, I mean, imagine that. Ranger is your four, and then, you know, once you get to the World Series, like, you need four. That's it. Yeah. You know, you can you can make two with everything else. So, um, that was the difference, and, you know, again, it, it, it sucks, but... Uh, people stepped up you know like at the right times i know there were still some like failures in the world series guys fizzled out but uh, we don't get there without some of the heroics from uh you know uh, pretty much everyone on the team Mm -hmm. you know everyone contributed to getting to that point it it sucks ultimately we fell short but um i mean it's also like astros are a fucking buzzsaw man (laughs) you know i hate to say it but we were right in august when we said it kind of just Felt like a fucking Astros season. Yep. <laughs> um, they were the quiet team all year. Nobody talked uh, about. Nobody them. talked about them because people hate them. And um, and the Yankees were the were Yankees rolling. were the talk of the town. The and then Mets there's the Dodgers rolling. and the Mets and um, then the know, Braves got hot. And... Right. And I mean, you know what the Astros have done? I, you all cheating shit aside, because I mean that'll never go away. But even since then, when they've presumably been clean or whatever, um, you know. They've been a perennial, you know, I mean, really underachiever in the playoffs too. When you consider mm-hmm. just how many times they've been in, you know, the World Series or, or in the ALCS, like probably should have at least one more ring uh, added to that. So, um, but just a, a, you ran into a good team and uh, didn't have. I think ultimately, I, I really just don't know that we had the talent to win that series. Um, I think we just got out talented, and that shit happens. Um, it sucks that it, it happened the way it did, but. I think, again, you know, this is a great case for John Middleton. Break out the old checkbook, you know, bring us uh, bring us our yearly <laughs> our yearly uh, stupid money. And uh, let's not spend $7 million on, like, Jerry's Familia. Jerry's Familia again, you know. Like, maybe we learned some lessons, Dom Dombrowski, maybe, you know. Like, let's... Maybe Hector Neris is good. <laughs> maybe Hector Neris is I think he's safe. the only Astro I'm happy for. Yeah. It's It's... It's Regrettably. bittersweet, but I am happy Hector has a ring on his finger. Yeah, good for him. Um, so yeah, I ultimately it's like a very bittersweet feeling. It's sort of like um, I don't know. It's like leaving a good job, you know. Like <laughs> you kind of you look back and you're like, damn, this sucks, you know. Like yeah. Um, but this feels like our generation's '93 Phillies. Probably less heartbreak. Yeah, <laughs> but but yeah, I you know, and I, a I think, lot of similarities. Hopefully not the. Uh, <laughs> Not the aftermath. Yes. Hopefully we don't have like, but like that that lovable loser yeah. type of energy where like you rallied around this team when when things were tough and then you know they did the the stupid tropes that everybody fell in love with. You know, dancing on my own is going to be something that is is remembered forever. Schwarber fest, like 
you rallied around just like the the dumb happy go luckiness of this team and I think that's what a lot of people remember about 93 as well to get to where they got to plus I mean whenever you go to Citizens Bank Park now even though it didn't end in a World Series there's gonna be a blue pennant that says 2022 out there which I think is still pretty freaking cool yeah Definitely. I mean, again, you know, we, we even talked about that even if they don't win the World Series, it's going to be a team that's going to be remembered for a long time. It's like just the 0-1-6ers. For... Like... Right. Like, yeah, I mean, we still talk about the 0-1-6ers a lot, and, you know, they've became a part of our, like, folklore. And, um, yeah, it just – it sucks because ultimately when you don't win the championship, frankly, it just means so much less. <laughs> you know, like – And shit changes too. Like Shit changes fast, and, you know, uh, again, you don't know when you'll be back in that spot again. You know, you have to really seize that opportunity when you can get it. It's why teams really push the chips on. Baseball can be a little different, but even baseball. It's why what the Ashes are doing is so impressive mm-hmm. in a lot of ways, right? Is um, typically, like, good baseball teams, good to great baseball teams have, like, a four-year window and cycle, and that's kind of it. And, you know, they might obviously retool and, and be back again, but it's, it's rare for teams that are even not just, like, smart, but spend a lot of money, like the Dodgers, right? Like, Dodgers are analytic driven have a smart team like they don't make dumb decisions and they go out and spend money they they push chips in to make big trades and what do they have to show for it you know like they've a mickey mouse world series they've won world series you know like it's just it's hard man it, it is like even when you do all the shit right yep. you, you make the smart signings you lose to the padres that's you know? why it makes the 08 <laughs> you lose to the like, phillies you lose to the phillies somehow you know that's why it makes the 08 phillies that much more impressive because we talk about it all the time they were the worst of that run and they ended up winning Right. Um, and, you know, I, I think a lot's going to change on this team going into this offseason. We've obviously already seen, you know, free agency get underway, and the Phillies have uh, claimed some guys off waivers today, uh, relief pitcher wise. Um, Zach Eflin declined the mutual option between he and the Phillies, so he is a free agent. So we might have seen Zach Eflin's final uh, performance in a Phillies uniform. Gene Segura's option was declined. Um, you know, there's there's going to be some change, and I I think the biggest one right now that we're on, and I think hopefully it's determined before the World Baseball Classic reports for their uh you know training camp and everything. Trey Watch is well, on. You know, this has been uh this has been another watch that I think we've talked about in the NFL with with Josh Allen's injury. Uh, what the fuck is up with Bryce's uh? Old Tommy John surgery, huh? It's Apparently, <laughs> uh, news came out about that today as well. So, actually, we gonna we gonna clear that up, or because it feels like we haven't talked about that in like four months. I can <laughs> give you an update right here. Because from... speaking of Phillies getting lucky or anything, a lucky break. If the Phillies don't have a DH, <laughs> if the end of this team is probably finished with like sixty-five oh, yeah. wins, <laughs> like... <laughs> if they don't have Bryce at all, you're doomed. Uh, Todd's lucky about. Right before we went live about a half hour ago, Dave Dombrowski said at the GM meetings that Bryce Harper will have his torn UCL evaluated on Monday. It could be anything from no surgery, which seems unlikely, to Tommy John surgery, to something in between. Different timetables for everything, of course. So Monday is when we'll find out about Bryce. Which, the more they talk about and the longer this goes, Bryce ain't playing in the World Baseball Classic. Right. Which sucks for him. Yes. um, You know. It just felt like... But we still might have two Phillies on that team because Trey Turner might sign with us by the time that gets underway in March. It would be a lot cooler if he did. (laughs) Jason Stark today on 97.5 saying there are some early rumblings already that Trey Turner wants to be in Philadelphia if he does not return to the Dodgers. There's obviously been those rumors, too, that Trey being from Florida, he wants to play on the East Coast again. Hey, man, it's, Bryce it's Harper. two hours from, from PHL to Fort Lauderdale, baby. Bryce Harper saying uh, when he was mic'd up during one of the games, his favorite player in Major League Baseball is Trey Turner. <laughs> How, who did he do that with before? Didn't he do that with – he? He didn't he say something about Castellanos? Am I, I like, imagining this? Castellanos, he said something about – they also played together when yeah. they were U18s or something like I that. Get, he And he also, I'm pretty sure, said it about JT before we traded for JT. And I think he said it, too, for JT's extension. I think yes. that might be what, what like, I'm kind of seeing in my mind. But That was right when baseball was starting back up during the pandemic, and JT knocked a ball, like, 
out of yeah. Citizens Bank Park, and Bryce just yelled at the top of his lungs, "Sign him!" Yeah. So when Bryce speaks, it's gone well. <laughs> someone listens. <laughs> Trey Turner would obviously be amazing. Fills a fills a, a gap in a need. We were texting about um, Degrom, and <laughs> I was resetting everything I ever said about Jacob Degrom. Yes. He signs in Philly. Greatest He's actually the greatest pitcher I've ever seen. Truly, one of the most. He's one of the most dominant non-playoff win pitchers I've ever seen in my life. Um, signed to Grom, signed Thor, rebuild the Mets, and core, get a uh, rotation. Get uh, Rodon, Rodon in here, like go let's get. Just, let's Robert build the uh, the, glu- the glued uh, the, the glued arm team. You know, like listen, if this just goes right, it's great. If it goes bad, we're self destruct well, I'll tell you somebody who else that I'm very much like interested in for this bullpen that opted out of his contract. Robert Suarez, a.k.a. the pitcher that Bryce Harper hit the bedlam at the bank home run off of. Yeah. You stick him in between Alvarado and Sir Anthony Dominguez in this bullpen, and we're cooking with a lot if of gas. we see, like, second half of the season, Alvarado for, like, all of next year. Um, and don't bring him in with runners on base. That would be great. That would be great. I think that's that's a development to you, Hope Stick. So. Plus, let's, let's not forget, Andrew Painter is, like, allegedly right. going to make his major league debut in 2023 it feels po- like more positive um you know and maybe that's just like trying to like self-soothe as much as possible but I, I i do think the phillies are still in a good spot next year to be there's no reason the phillies can't be a wild card team again next year you know we'll see about the division we'll see what the braves and mets do um this offseason and, and how they build out because obviously the braves have dominated the division for like our entire life but um you know, stands to reason you could break through that. Um, it's not like the, for like as bad as the Phillies were from you know again like the first like sixth of the season, um, they they were off pace. Obviously, the division. I'm not making the but like realistically, like if they just again have like a more competent start to the year, you don't lose Bryce for like you know a quarter of it and um, Gene Segura for a month and a half. You're, you're probably not like whatever it was like 14 games out of it. You're, you're Probably much more competitive. Yeah. So uh, we'll see. You know, again, though, like I felt like it coming into the year, like this team could make a wild card and, and do something special. And, and they did, you know, again, it didn't end up the way that they'll be immortalized forever um, in the way that only a championship team can. But they did do something special. I, I do think there is something to the fact now that like people were back into baseball. I like. I can't tell you how many people I saw like out and about in Philly's gear. I've mm-hmm. not like I would see that maybe on like opening day, you'd see people because yeah. be, people just get excited about the spring fever and stuff. And um, I mean, like everywhere I looked, it was people breaking out the old the, the old jerseys, the old hats, and um, that's fun. You know, like that's that's when it gets like enjoyable again to kind of like you just look at a stranger and you're like, yeah, like how about our Phillies? You know, like that's just nice. Mm-hmm. It was nice to have that again. Um, that was that was. I think one of my favorite parts, actually, was just, like, being able to have... Because, I mean, like, the Eagles obviously made the Super Bowl in one, but, like, it's different when it's a series, you yes. know? Uh, it's you know, When it's not just a game, uh, you know, and we haven't had that. And I think a lot of people, like, they want to, like, self-compartmentalize the fact that, well, yes, the Eagles always have, like, that, that special one-up in this area... The Phillies are the 1A when things are going. And I think this whole run proved that. Like, the amount of love and the amount of, like, passion that goes behind the Phillies when they are on a roll is unmatched. And I think that's super special about this area with that team is that, you know, no matter what, like, and I think the the gatekeeping stuff for people, it's like, you know, I think it's so stupid. Like, if people want to get behind the team, let them get behind the team. Yeah. Like, There's, the more the merrier. Listen, I have been fans of bad teams my entire life. Yes. And um, I can say this. I did not feel like my fandom was ever challenged when someone who, yeah, maybe, and you know what, maybe they were making better decisions by not watching the team when they were winning, like, 70 games and doing something more productive with their time, you know? There's always room on the bandwagon, whatever. I even hate the word, like, bandwagon. Yeah. It's like... It's fucking fun. Let people have fun. Like, right. let people go out and, like, go to fucking Xfinity or whatever and, like, have some beers and, like, be a part of, like... That's what sports does for people. That's why we love sports, ultimately, is, like, it allows you to have those, like, easy social interactions, that that fun community spirit. Like, that is, like, at its core why people 
like mentally and psychologically are attracted to sports. Um, and, and, you know, that obviously turns into tribalism at times, but um, to me, yeah, it, it was cool again, just to have everyone kind of back in and, you know, this is why playoff baseball was so much fun. Yes. It was so cool being on that stage again. Like, um, so I, I just, I, again, I, I hope we're, we're back at this level next year. Um, be great to, to be back in a world series. Do again. you feel like this is the start of something? Cause I saw this a lot on Twitter where people had differing opinions, whether, you know, we're just starting and like, this is, you know, the building block to get to where we want to be again. Or was this just a one-off? I think this could potentially be a one-off in terms of World Series just because the NL is a hard mm-hmm. league. Like, and you look at the teams that even the Phillies had to get through to get to this point. We're good teams that you can make the case are, are just going to be back again. You know, the Cardinals, right? That's a team, two still like great young stars um, that are just came off like MVP seasons uh, You know, for themselves, they have gold glove seasons for themselves. Like, No reason they're not going to be back within that fold, a smart organization that makes the right moves. Padres, overall, a generally young team with stars that are improving, technically didn't even have one of their biggest stars this season, um, have spent, like, smartly. Again, Manny Machado coming off an MVP-level season. They'll be back again, you know, at least competing for a wild card, mm-hmm. right? Um, the Braves. <laughs> Just ever-present danger. Uh, the see Dodgers. Where, we'll see where Dansby goes. Right, you know, uh, but it doesn't seem to matter then. They'll have somebody <laughs> from Georgia that comes up from, you know, double A in just May. another Matt like, Olson oh, from somewhere. Like, they'll just steal hit someone from some other <sighs> team and, and figure it out. The, the, you know, the Mets will at least be competitive uh, till August. <laughs> um, we'll see. I, I think the biggest question with the Mets, obviously they re-signed Diaz to a ridiculous contract. Um, Got to pay the trumpet tax. Got to pay the trumpet tax. Um. That Their bullpen, tag. outside of Diaz, now that he's signed, they don't have a bullpen. They, I mean, have, lose, they have a lot of work to do You lose there. DeGrom, too, and, and, I mean, it seems likely you're going to lose DeGrom. And Scherzer, I mean, old. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's still dominant, you know, like, when, when injury you get out in the regular season. But injury prone, and we saw it through the playoffs, definitely. Same problem that, like, Wheeler and Nola had, where it's like, yeah, like, especially when you're older, it's hard to just, hard to do that shit all season. So And, and that's that good Dork Brandon Nimmo bit, is a free agent as well. So You got Dodgers... They'll be back, of course. So, you know, it's and then you, and you, then you got teams the, like the Brewers who Brewers, are right in it. Giants might, uh, you know, have some kind of like rebound a little bit, like, especially if they get Judge. Like, it's it's tough. So, yes, I I don't. I'm not saying like next year they're in the World Series again, right. but I, I I think it's a little bit of both. I think this was this was a little bit of a one off, you know, in that realistically. I don't know that this team is actually two games away from a champ. You know, like, you know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. they were there. They were there. They did it. And it wasn't, they did it on their own merit either. I'm not taking anything away from what they did this season. But um, I do think in some ways this is the start of something. Because you look at some of the big performers from these playoffs, too. The young guy, Brandon Marsh, young. (laughs) Which he doesn't look it, right? But Youngest guy um, on the team. Bryson Sott was a rookie and had, like, the most, like, steel balls I've ever seen was taking pitches like nobody's business in the World Series. This was a guy too that wasn't like regular starter for the Phillies either. He, he was started like, at third base on opening day. He was on like, he was on like Pena, right? Like for the Astros where it's like this guy's just like, he's been the guy all season, like the the next man up, whatever. Um, he got sent down at one point this year like for Didi Gregorius. Came up and just, I mean Didi, Jesus. Um, and then played second base when Gene got hurt and turned into the guy that a lot of people expected him to be when the Phillies drafted him. You know, I think you just look at this team and, you know, Alec like Bohm turning into a gold glover in the playoffs. Nick Cassianos, it turns out he just needs like uh, Adderall, I guess, to <laughs> <laughs> to be like a, a gold Also, the people defenseman. who are like, uh, I don't know how you feel, but I personally feel, especially down the stretch, the way it looked like he was approaching his at-bats. You break down everything that Nick Castellanos went through this season just off the field, I think he's going to be a much better player next year for the Phillies. Yeah, I mean, like, I'll say this, a little bit of a low bar this year to cross For sure. Fight, you know, um, you know do, signed late, new right. city, wife was pregnant, a lot of, trying like, to find a place to live. People, people don't always give credit to, like, the personal stuff that happens, like... And, you know, had a lat injury it. down the stretch and came back, you know, right when that start of the road trip happened in Chicago. Right. He was like a, a big, a, like re addition to the team. So, um, yeah, I mean, you just look at this team in general and like, 
there are places where maybe you don't get quite the same level of performance that you got from guys in the regular season, but I, I don't see like huge regression with this team. In fact, if you could still make this case that again, this team in the regular season should be better than they were this mm-hmm. season. Like, you know, once you get to the playoffs, it's, it's obviously a different story. Teams just get hot and um, that's the way it's been in the national league. The past few seasons, <laughs> it's just been whoever gets hot in, in October and that's it. Um, but yeah, I mean, Generally, there are young guys in this team that you expect uh, either get called up and make their debuts or, or next year um, have that full season. Brandon Marsh joins halfway through the season. Um, center guard. Center guard. Like, we'll see, you know, what what, what happens with him. Uh, but, again, you have a guy like that who's, who's able to work in as, like, a fifth guy for you. I would bring him back on a one-year deal, honestly. I, I did not at any point understand the center guard hate. Yeah. Was he, like, spectacular? No, but it's also, like... W- we did not. I'm sorry, but we did not sign Noah Syndergaard with the expectation that he was going to be like 2014 pre right. Tommy John. Like no one had. Like people deluded themselves into thinking that he was going to be that, and he hadn't been that, and wasn't that, and that's not why we got him. I thought he like, was great for what he was and how he performed. I thought he was a fantastic trade. Deadline. Pitched lights out in the World Series yeah. too, by the way. Like <laughs> I, I don't know. I thought so. he was great you know, in a Phillies uniform, and I'd love to have him back. It yeah. seemed like he enjoyed being here, too. Absolutely. So, yeah, I, I would take Noah back for sure. Um, yeah, pitching to me, I think, again, it's like, God, I, I and it was it's last year, too, and I, I, that's what disappoints me is last year it felt like we missed an opportunity, and maybe that is the difference in a World Series situation. But, um, again, I think you need, you need to sign a starter, get one of these elite guys, and then, you know, someone like Trey Turner would be fantastic. Um, and get like a, a solid, solid relief pitcher. And I think this team is in good shape still. Plus I've, you're in the mix for a Japanese superstar. Right. Can't forget that. Either. Like <laughs> that, that could be, you know, within the next couple of, like by Thanksgiving, we could know if he's posted and what team he's, you know, potentially wanting to come to, which allegedly it's like Phillies Yankees are like the two. Yeah. So be nice. It would be nice. We got Bryce Harper, so I, you know, it's it just feels like this team can improve and can be back in the playoffs next year. I I would be surprised if this team like really regresses in mm-hmm. a harsh way. Um, you have your manager now. Have your manager now. Like I I think that he, seems like everybody loves. He managed well down the stretch. Like and I mean, obviously, when you take over and have the the season that he does, and then gets him to a World Series, like you're gonna endear yourself in a big way. Um, Snubbed for manager of the year. Stupid. <laughs> Yeah, let's give it to some other... Like, I don't like. care that the voting takes place before the playoffs. This guy literally took a team that was seven games under five hundred and drowning and got them to the playoffs. Right, so... Let alone what happened in the playoffs. It's... it's a, it, All it means is that he'll get some makeup votes next year if the mm-hmm. Phillies are good. <laughs> so, maybe... maybe I did also remember, too, because I'm pretty sure this is still how it works. Rob Thompson's going to be managing the All-Star game this year. <laughs> good for him. <laughs> Because the World Series managers uh, manage the All-Star game, so that's pretty sweet. Um, If you had your pick of the free agent shortstops, I'm going to not include Carlos Correa because it seems like he's going to go back to Minnesota. Trey Turner, Dansby Swanson, Xander Bogarts. I know you love Xander, too. (laughs) Because I think all three of those guys, you put them in the leadoff spot or the number two hole on this team, it's a completely different lineup. I so damn. Who's the who's the youngest out of that? I don't know off the top of my head. Trey Turner's older than I realized. I think too. Trey Turner's like twenty nine. Yeah. yeah, right. Um isn't Xander pretty young? I wanna say Xander's like twenty seven, maybe. Uh, something about getting those guys, you know, where you know you're getting like Xander's thirty. Holy wow. shit. Um and who is the in uh, Dansby, Dansby Swanson, right? I think he might be the youngest. Dansby has this great, yeah. Dansby is twenty eight. Okay. He'll be, but next year, like for the season, he'll be twenty nine. He'll be his twenty nine year old season. Dansby makes these like great defensive plays, man. Like just comes in in the clutch. Um, I would not be upset with either three. Maybe no. that's a cop out answer. Uh, Trey would be great because we've seen it on big stages, and and just would be a the fantastic. Chemistry is already there, right? But give me any of those three, and that's. That's a great addition to this team, and I would be be happy with with any of those guys. But um, give me. It seems like Trey is the guy that they're yeah. like locked in on, and I mean, let's not forget, like the Phillies could spend a lot of money this offseason because they have sixty five million dollars coming off the books from free agent contracts. Like, 
DD contract done. Bring me my money. Number thirty-seven done. Trey Turner is actually the youngest by like one hundred and forty days. By the hey, way, so. that's a lot of days. Yeah, that's about a third of a year. He had, he had quite a year. Quite a you see, year. He had a uh, <laughs> he had a hype resume video <laughs> with John Hamm <laughs> narrating it. I did that. They like sent out the agents and it's like. <laughs> Feels weird that you had to do that, but yeah, all right. It's like you're Trey Turner, dude. Like you're one. Of they the, know. They're they one know. of the best baseball players of all time. They like, know. They you don't need to tell them. Um, he had a uh, he had a 809 OPS this season. Put him. Put him at leadoff. Let Schwarber hit with runners on base. I think that's such a a game changer for this lineup too. It's moving Schwarber and Reese down in the lineup. Just trying to see who led us in OPS this year. So Bryce had an eight seventy seven, Schwarber with an eight twenty seven, JT with an eight twenty. So he would be sliding it with the big boys. Which would be a nice like Trey setting the table and getting on base the way he does to then let you know, Schwarber hit with runners on base, Reese hit with runners on base more consistently. Well, if if Reese is back. Right. Which, which is, you know, I Question think he mark. will be because I think it makes probably more sense for the team to be bringing him back than than not, but um, is a question mark. Yeah, you know, I just think it makes more sense to keep a guy here who this team likes. He's homegrown, and it prevents you from having to go out and spend twenty plus million dollars on a first baseman in free agency. <laughs> I tell you what, though, you put him in some kind of defensive all-star uh, training over the winter because Christ alive. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I think because you can he live, would say that you can live with with bats will go cold, and it, it won't always happen at the best time for you, right? Like, and it Reese was not even our worst hitter right. at any point in these playoffs. In fact, Reese you was at, tied for the lead in home runs this entire <laughs> postseason right. with teammates JT Real Muto and Bryce Harper. Um, I'm sorry, Kyle Schwarber and Bryce Harper. Defensively is where they were. You, you got to sharpen up, but mm-hmm. um, and I think that can be fixed, right? Hopefully. Especially at a position like first base. I, I just yeah, I, I think there's higher priority areas of improvement than first base. Frankly, yes, you know, to me, like I don't think like the difference between Reese and like name your schmuck is is that massive mm-hmm. to warrant like you said going out and spending the money um as opposed to yeah getting a Trey Turner plus ex dominant starter right um and like quality relief pitcher you know like and, and I then think being aggressive at the deadline yeah. for something again like I think a bigger thing that needs to be focused on this offseason saying Reese is here still I think Kevin Long working with Brandon Marsh and his Swing approach at the plate is a far more important thing that needs to happen this offseason than Reese's defense. Yeah, definitely. Talk to Brandon Marsh, figure out, you know. <laughs> Find that dog in him. Find that dog in him. That's what he needs. Um, I do have positive news for the listeners and for you, Matt. I haven't brought this up to Matt for the people out there, but it is a tradition that, you know, typically – we go to opening night, mm-hmm. which will be April 8th, 2023, against the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, it seems like a bunch of our partners, including Kenwood Beer, Bino, and our merch partners are down to uh, be backing us for a live tailgate podcast on opening night, April 8th, 2023. Yeah, out there in the parking lot. Parking lot, tailgate details will be uh created in due time but marty i'm already thinking about freezing my balls yes. off <laughs> well a, luckily it's 45 like 45 it degree april night luckily it's like it was this year when we went it's a 405 start it's still cold it still I will be still cold freezing. but the sun will hopefully be out <laughs> yeah that's all we can hope for it was point. i will say we were we were very confused when it was like oh it's opening night 405 start it was much better than uh, it being, you know, ten o'clock at night and I wind went chilling. To an opening night. I think Bryce's first season. That was that was cold. cold. I we think were there was, for that. 
the coldest baseball game I've ever been to. That was like 30 degrees. Like, and the year is, before, 2018. I was camping out terrible. in the bathroom under the hand Because I'm also like, I'm a cold sensitive yes. person. Like, I get cold. Damn. Between 18 and 19. Because 18 was the game that we went to. Big group against the Marlins when the Phillies scored the like 21. 20 runs. That was freezing cold. Yeah. And then Bryce's first year was, that was a cold unreal. Night. Worth it, though. Worth it. first dinger, so. Um. Yeah, I mean, thinking back on this season, too, like, we saw Cassianos' first home run in a Phillies uniform. That was very on brand for us. I had almost blanked that out of my memory, actually. We were there for Cy Gibson, his very. Cy Gibson. <laughs> Rest very in short peace, uh, Cy Young candidacy from, <laughs> was that April 11th to. Uh, <laughs> April 20th? <laughs> yeah, I think we got, we got it almost to, like, the end of April there. I think it almost made it to Easter. We had, uh, I fucking hate this place classic moment um it just feels I'm good that we, we didn't so... win the world series because that would be the perfect oh. that'd be the perfect like start of the the youtube comp oh my this god alec boom that about how much he fucking hates this place <laughs> schwarber losing his mind on angel hernandez on sunday night baseball against the brewers like <laughs> we had some good times we had some good moments this year so such a year um it was indeed a year i that think happened and i think the best part you know it's a short off season now, and there's no lockout. Yeah, no looming, uh, <laughs> no looming uh, union disaster, which is nice. <laughs> and you know, normally we're already in off season mode by now for a month. Now you know it kind of just expedites, and you know we just have the rest of November, December, and then January, and then you know pitchers and catchers will be right around the corner. Um, but yeah, shout out to the Phils and shout out to the Union, brought to you by our friends at Bino Board. The Team Portugal board is dropping this Friday uh, for the World Cup. They've got eight more boards that they'll be dropping that are World Cup inspired. Uh, you guys can go to binhoboard.com. That's B-I-N-H-O-B-O-A-R-D.com and use code BINHOUSP for 10% off your order. We're going to have these at our tailgate. It is the best tabletop game out there. Uh, it will be a conversation piece in your man cave, your she shed, your tailgates. Uh, it's, you know, paper football meets foosball. You got Bino. Go to BinoBoard.com. Use code BinoUSP for 10% off your order. Matt, I think this MLS Cup was the best soccer match I've ever, like, tuned in for. Just in terms of the dramatics and theatrics. And it sucked the result was what it was. But overall... I thought the MLS Cup was super engaging. I think it brought in so many more new fans and casual fans because the union were in it. Um, still some things I would probably change about the MLS Cup after watching it. A lot of LAFC fans absolutely suck. Um, yep. The beer throwing is like a huge issue that has been going on with LAFC fans for pretty much their entire history, which isn't very long, but... Um, yeah, not a great look in your like marquee match, uh, of, of the entire season to have opposing players getting pelted with, uh, yeah. with beer, beer, uh, cups and cans. So not the best. Um, what a game though. I mean, yeah, like as far as like being an advertisement, <laughs> um, one of the hardest L's I think I've taken in my yeah. life. Because uh, you just got to hang on for four minutes. And, um, man, Gareth Bale has uh, has put me into some low moments during my time. And uh, that was that was pretty low of him. I'll say that. It wasn't quite the, the bicycle kick he scored against Liverpool in the Champions League final. But it fucking hurt just the same. <laughs> <laughs> say that much. Um, it sucked. I mean, it's just to lose that way sucks. Uh, and then you get to the, the penalties. Blake saves the first, and you're thinking, all right, like, ball doesn't lie. We're going to, like, get out of here with this shit still. And um, I think as soon as Gosdag slips, it's just – that is, like, such a – and it's such a shitty moment because he, of all players, like, could have been an MVP of the league if he, you know, maybe just, like, got hot a little earlier and, and, and figured it out. Like, just sucks. I, it just, Corey Burke getting hurt, I think, was detrimental to – the penalty kicks like yeah if you had him like that can change something right um i just think it it, it all it all went topsy-turvy <laughs> those last that those was last a roller coaster. Minutes, post post red card especially just felt like 
Union especially knew that this was like the opportunity to, to seal the game and um, in some ways credit to LA for the way that they, I mean, still like, you know, a man down and, and found the way in those last few minutes to find the goal. But And of yeah. course it's a fucking Philly guy that shuts us down too. Right. And uh, like, as soon as they like, <laughs> who knows this whole fucking soon, team, I didn't realize he was the backup there. And then I see the name like Christ, like yeah. this is going to be it, isn't it? Like, and knows this team like a book, knows this team. Well, you know, that's going to be the narrative. Then you also have like their goal. The starting goalkeeper gets injured and it turns into like, you know, do it for him type of thing. And Which then, credit to, to Fox sports. Like normally any other sport they are showing, Nine million different oh, yeah. angles of a replay of an injury, no matter what sport it is. Credit to them for not cutting to that injury on a replay. S- soccer in general, I would say, is pretty good about like when it's like a nasty injury. You might see the replay once. Um, and I was really surprised in that incident, too, because obviously it went to a VAR review because it was initially given bizarrely as a yellow. Um, and then obviously it gets reviewed to a red, but you don't even see the review because obviously the injury... The keeper sustained was was so heavy, but um, tough, tough fucking way to lose. I mean, just it sucks. I I think if there's one silver lining, and this might be the only silver lining, is uh is that it might encourage this team to kind of run it back. You still, I think you still lose a guy or two over over the winter, but um yeah, you're losing Pax and Aronson and somebody else too i think they said is going back to europe like you might you might lose one of gazag and 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 wagner but outside of that you know maybe this team sort of uh sticks together still which would be fantastic um and and you'd like to see them grow and have that another season because this team still has like i I think a lot of juice in them um just brutally disappointing too that, that it just didn't get over the line um and that's all there is to say. You know, it's just it was, it was a disappointing way to lose. It's a great season for the Union, like all the way around, though. A lot of fun, again, similar to the Phillies, where it's like, we'll remember this. And um, they're doing like the reverse Phillies, and that like last year they lose in mm-hmm. the, the conference final. This year they make it to the final and lose. So maybe. 2020, they win the Supporters Shield. You know, like <laughs> maybe they're. Maybe they're just gearing us up for a really, really nice. Uh, also, Jack Elliott's a fucking rock star. Absolutely, like, <laughs> and he gets robbed too from just having like, just a fantastic final performance. Like, who would who would have thunk uh, that second goal he scored? I, my jaw was on the ground. I'm watching it down here in the studio, and I'm just like, holy shit! Yeah, it was uh, it, the 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 so LA scores in like what like the 83rd minute, and yeah. uh, like I was looking at Sarah, I was like, that sucks. <laughs> that is that is such a backbreaker um, at, at that point in the game, and. Literally, like the the next like kind of open play period, you get a free kick and and score right off it. Like it was just a great response and um, just deeply frustrating. Couldn't couldn't get to the the, the final result. But um, like I said, you know, I, I think a new team kind of similar to the Phillies, where it's like you kind of expect them to be back in this spot again next year. Maybe you get uh, you get the supporter shield again, and you get that game gets played in in Chester, and maybe it's a little different. But um, yeah, it was. Uh, it was a tough one, but it was, I mean, as far as like, that was like, I, it's so hard to, to compare it to other sports, but that was like Bill's chiefs of last year mm-hmm. in the playoffs. Like it's like, and it was great too. Cause ultimately, and I mean, still these teams technically still have not been separated in like four games, you know, but just, you know, they had to go to penalties obviously for, for this instance, but you know, they've, they've been drawing every game they've played in and they've all been exciting. They've all been fascinating in their own way. Um, and so you know, you, you got to see the two best teams play, and they did not disappoint in terms of entertainment and quality of play, too. It was, a, like, a well-played game. It wasn't uh, really sloppy. A lot of times in finals, you get those kind of, like, cagey, mm-hmm. nervous performances. None of that. Um, you know, both teams left it out there. Um, and I'm just bitter. Yes. <laughs> bitter about that one. Fucking Gareth Bale, dude. <sighs> I say. Fucking He's going to ruin my life in like two and a half weeks of the World Cup, too. I'm uh, sure of it. <laughs> fucking ringer is what he is. Um, Dude went there just to, literally just to train to for the put, World just Cup. Just to put the miles in and play golf. And they bring him on and he, he does that to us. It's such bullshit. Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, but shout out to the Union. Um, and Matt, uh, the Eagles are back after their mini buy this coming Monday. Um, 
against Washington Commanders team that apparently the Attorney General is issuing a statement tomorrow about uh, the state of the Commanders. Don't know exactly what that'll be. No, because that's good and normal, right? That's you cool. never know what to expect when it comes to Daniel Snyder. Um, so, I mean, people are going to continue to say, oh, who the Eagles play? They played who's on their fucking schedule. That's who they played. <laughs> they're 8-0. and They're the best team in football because your record is what you say you are. Um, and, I mean, their their schedule the rest of November is, is looking even more promising now because – not only do you have the commanders off a of mini buy with an additional day on the mini buy, which is not typical. Um, then you have the now Jeff Saturday coached Indianapolis Colts, <laughs> followed by Sunday Night Football at the link, debuting the all black with black helmet uniform combo against the ever spiraling Green Bay Packers. Yeah. That Packers game was looking a little more challenging in August. Say that. Um, <laughs> that was the one game you and I, when we did our breakdown of the schedule, that we were like, all right, this could be the first real test. Who knows? It's still good. The NFL is weird sure. like that um, this season. But, yeah, for them to be standing at 8-0 at this point is uh, pretty surprising. <laughs> Don't know that we saw that coming. Tell you, the Titans game, though. In a few weeks is looking at. It'll be real. I think depending on who's better. playing quarterback is going to make that sure, game I'm very sure interesting. I'm sure will be back by then. Um, yeah, I, yeah. Eagles have been really impressive uh, to start the season, and like you said last week, this is the first time they've ever started eight and zero, right? So yep. first eight and zero start in franchise history, which is, uh, I mean, the NFC is, is right there for them uh, to to take control of, and you gotta you gotta put your foot on the uh, the gas there and do that. So. Looking forward to it. They've yeah, been a lot of fun to watch. They've been very exciting. Looking forward to Monday Night Football. Um, and like Joel Embiid said, he had Philly's fever, Matt. So Sixers season yeah, officially he started. For games. <laughs> he said in the post-game press conference after Phoenix, our season started tonight. Uh, it was fun watching the Phillies, but unfortunately their season's over now, so our season starts now. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> See about that. Uh, see the thing about that is, well, is hard as ad for a month. Uh, so, eh, <laughs> does it? <laughs> Speaking of, did you see uh, old pal Michael Rubin was on the Pat McAfee show today, and uh, <laughs> some incredible quotes from uh, fanatic CEO Michael Rubin, uh, <laughs> who said, "Rubin says selling the Sixers is better for him because he now quote." has no rules that I need to live by. And obviously part of him selling was because Fanatics is getting into the sports gambling space. Uh, McAfee interprets that uh, to refer to gambling. And Michael Rubin says he means, quote, if I want to help with a free agent, I don't have to worry about breaking rules. <laughs> Not sure we should be. Hey, we already lost our second round picks. <laughs> I, I, I mean, come on. Are you shitting me? Like Unbelievable. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm not trying to be like the martyrs here, but like Christ alive. Is like anyone more persecuted than the sick? What did we do to the NBA? It's not like we're like, it's not like we're the Astros. And right. it's like, this is like, we're like OJ where it's like you get the book thrown at you for the break in. Like hey, Christ, what did we do? Who did we murder? We're like that meme of like the girl, like crying in the pool, like drowning. And then the parents holding the other kid up, the kid being held as the Oklahoma city thunder. And we're the kid. Drowning. We're the skeleton yeah. at the bottom of the ocean. I Jesus Lord. Unbelievable. Just make some, make some rich hack pay like a million dollars. Why are we getting draft picks siphoned off of us? Not like we'd use them anyway, but Jesus. Right. I mean, we'd sell them. <laughs> Unbelievable. Hey, hey, we would sell one of them. Right. And then the other one we would draft, and he'd look really promising, and Doc Rivers would never play him. And then he goes to OKC, and his name's Isaiah Joe, the yeah. pick that was promised. Um, Don't worry, we will be trading for him next summer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have to ask this too, Matt, because it seems to continue to be carrying over. Flyers actually a decent team? No clue. I have not watched a second, and I will not be watching a second. I, I don't know, <laughs> but I get the score updates from just like my my app alerts. And I do I'm just too, like, and I got to like, I got to turn it off because uh, I, I just get the <laughs> raised eyebrow. Like, what is going on? They they don't have my trust or my faith. I don't know what it is. Um, it's insane. 
Did you see? Did you see the clip though when they played Ottawa? And Drew kicked uh, Carter Hart's stick back to him. I did not. Carter Hart lost his stick. I didn't know what the uh, sequence had happened before, but Carter Hart lost his stick, and Drew's skating back, and he just kicks the stick back to him. Everyone was like, "You can take Drew out of Philadelphia, but you can't take the Philadelphia Drew." <laughs> what a team! What a team! I can't believe we have to. Uh, only have games from the Sixers and Flyers. And thank God for the Eagles right now. God, the winter sucks, man. <laughs> Dark at four o'clock. <sighs> I gotta I gotta I gotta care about the Sixers again. I get like it's unbelievable. I gotta tell you, no part of me is looking forward to watching the Sixers. <laughs> They've burned me so bad. I it's, like, <laughs> it's unbelievable. The bags under my eyes, the cigarette burns on my skin. I am just Lord above. <laughs> I'm not ready again. Uh, I'm not, I, I don't know how much I can commit to a hardenless Sixers team in November. Well, like we've always said, the season doesn't start until Christmas. I know, but I got to watch still. <laughs> God, oh, man. man. Unreal. Also, shout out Brendan Aronson uh, for making the Team USA uh, World Cup roster. Yes, uh, it's big time. Uh, but Matt Survivor, 43. It's brought to you by our friends over at Pickup. You guys can go to playpickup.com, start playing the hottest headlines in sports, rack up points on your fan profiles, cash them in for prizes on the Pickup Marketplace. That's playpickup.com. Uh, I am still kind of behind. I did put my votes in for our fantasy league, so I did see who was voted out last week, but I did not get a chance to watch last week's episode because um, we were all experiencing the great Philly sports bender of 2022. Um, but Survivor tonight, obviously, we are fully merged now. And uh, we're still looking good, though, with our pick of, of James for the pod. Yeah, James. I, so, J, I don't know if James was, like, a little sick. But he's been talking, and he sounds like he has the, like, when you were a kid and you would talk into a fan at school. I don't know what's going on with that. I don't know if he just kind of has, like, a gravelly voice, and then being out there is like, made it worse. But right. I, I looked at Sarah, and I was like... He sounds like he's talking to a fan. Like, is he okay? Like, I, the whole time I wanted him to, like, clear his throat or something, you know? Um, he looked good again, though, which is fantastic. Exactly what we need. Um, yeah, Dwight went home last week. It didn't seem like a, all that strategic of a vote. At least to us, again, sometimes, you know, like, we don't we don't get the reads that the, the people do um, when they're actually out there on the island. Um you know, and, and I think there was some, like, division between Cody and Dwight and, and Jesse and Dwight as, as a result, too. So I think uh, sort of one of those votes, I think, that people kind of pass through just because. And it, it's it's a little bit of, I don't want to call it an easy vote, but, um, you know, it, it felt like maybe the vote could have gone to someone like Noel. Uh, and she seems to be, like, highlighted as, as maybe a, a potential threat going forward. Um, I would say, like, episode is very much about Janine and you know about how she's gonna have to like rebound I would say if you like thinking about Janine winning I would say hold on to that some of that information about like you know the pep talk Noel gave her because you know we've just seen I don't know felt a, felt a little strange to include that that's all I'll say but um, I do have Janine on my fantasy team there you go so I uh, I like I like where we're at I would say yeah. I, I I like where we're at with James especially I still do not have a great read on the on the team. It's I, such a weird season. We so we we play Fantasy Survivor and me and Sarah were like putting in our votes and she was like, I don't even know who to vote for. And I was like, the only person I feel confident with like in regards to voting for people in fantasy is not Ryan. I'm not putting any votes on Ryan because he just feels like I'm not going to call him a goat because I think that's unfair, but I think he he feels like a makes it to top five, mm-hmm. top six type of person. Just by like sheer, like he seems likable. I think he's, he seems like he like people want to be like partnered up with him, at, um, you know, for like events and stuff and, and for challenges because uh, he's 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 good at them. Largely speaking, um, seems to like work around camp and things like that. Seems like a pleasant person brings people valuable information. People are, seem fine sharing stuff with him too. Like he seems in some ways at least trusted. Um, he's like the only person that I'm like positive 
and I say that, and he's probably going to get voted off tonight. But, you know, like, he's the only person I'm like, yeah, he's probably safe. I think people just like him, and I don't know that he's winning, but I also don't know that people see him as a threat right now, you know? Yeah. There, it Like, when it comes to this season, it just feels like it could be anybody, which we haven't really had the past two seasons, really, when, you know, since it's come back. It always feels like you can kind of, like, start to pinpoint the people that are going to make it. Now, it, it just really feels like a free-for-all season. I'll see. In some parts, that's true. In some parts, though, did not see Erica coming. Right. Marianne, I would say we caught on maybe like earlier th- with Erica. Mm-hmm. Erica, even at this point in her, in her season, I did not feel was like a strong. Yeah, we didn't really know candidate. Erica until final tribal. Marianne is w- like this is around was like oh shit like she's very good yeah. like <laughs> like she like you know is, is playing this very well. Um, so who knows? You know, like someone could emerge. I said something about Janine. I, I really like um, even someone like Cassidy, I, I think has played it well. Um, you know, I think Jesse has played well. I think Carla has played well. Like, I think, I think everyone has played well for the most part, mm-hmm. like a lot of the big characters. Um, I, it's hard to pick a winner. It's hard to pick people that you think are like really out of it. No one seems like truly down and out at this point. And we've seen the last two seasons that the people that you think are somehow aren't <laughs> like, that's just the way, the way it works. Uh, so we'll see what happens on tonight's episode. Make sure you guys follow at buffs and snuffs on Twitter and, uh, make sure you're following us at underground PHI on Twitter and Instagram. We are about to announce our giveaway winner for us hitting three K on the Twitter machine. Uh, saw that they, they did the extra entry, which was subscribing to our YouTube channel and to Josh Reynolds podcast. That's ball folks. Great podcast name, by the way. Um, shout out to Josh and shout out to Dewani for partnering up with us for the giveaway. Scrolled through the Twitter, some hilarious tweets. The pin tweet is great too. Um, said, this is my peak Bob Nightingale saying the world series is now scheduled Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday in Philadelphia, Friday, off day, Saturday, and Sunday in Houston. Somebody said, I'm sure Philly did everything they could to get the game postponed. And Sean Hartman said, yeah, we control the earth. It's pretty dope. Um, so congrats to Sean Hartman. Also, great Twitter handle, Chicken Parma Sean. Uh, you are the winner of our giveaway, which includes the Kobe, Joel, and B jersey, the autographed Dolph Shays photo, and then your choice of Dewani Art. Uh, so we will DM you, figure out all the uh, semantics. Thank you to everybody who entered. We had... Over 400 people enter the giveaway. Um, have about, I want to say, overall, to get the actual profile here. By so, the way, I just want to say, shout out to the legend that shucked a beer at Ted Cruz's head. Yes. At, uh, at the Azure Sprint. <laughs> Somehow we didn't lead with that. Unbelievable. Like, the fact that he was in the parade is just embarrassing. What a schmuck. What, what an a absolute loser. schmuck. What a worm. Um... Also, shout out Josh Shapiro and John Fetterman. Yes, sir. Hey, Doug Mastriano, suck my fucking balls. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking loser. God damn. Rest in piss, bozo. 41% of the goddamn vote. Embarrassing. Uh, 281 new followers from the giveaway as well. A whole bunch of new YouTube subscribers. So we hope you guys tune into the podcast now if you're brand new. Um, and also, shout out to every single person who got on, you know, the roller coaster with us covering this Philly season. You know, Matt and I look forward to, uh, you know, February rolling around, pitchers and catchers every single year. And, you know, to think almost five years ago, we were in our old studio room banging hand over fist for Jake Arietta to sign a free agent contract here in March to now being, you know, two wins away from a World Series is pretty fucking cool. Um, so to everybody who followed along this Philly season with us, hopefully you keep riding with us because we are trying to bring you the best goddamn Phillies content possible in all the Philly sports. But this Philly season was special, and you know, covering two championships in the span of a month was pretty freaking cool and something that we've been looking to kind of check the box on since we started this podcast uh, in 2018. Yeah. Um, Saturday was a tough day. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say that. Hey, we can always say we were the first. <laughs> First uh, first city to lose two championships in one day. And then Christian texted me as well. And uh, the 
esports League of Legends team that's owned by Comcast Spectacor, they also lost the League of Legends championship. <laughs> Three for three, you know? They had to get in on the fun. Well, I'll say this. Does bode well for the Eagles? Yes. So, we'll say, you know, because what was it in, in, was it 80 or 80? It was 80, everyone made it. 80, everyone made it. But only the Phillies won. Right. So, maybe, you know, like... Maybe it's the Eagles, Flyers, Sixers. You know, like maybe one of those three. That'd be cool. And how did we celebrate losing two championships, Matt? Well, Sunday everyone went and watched 40th rotisserie chicken get devoured at an abandoned pier behind a Walmart. In what more can you add to something like that? <laughs> Shout out to that guy, too, because he's also helping donate uh, food to uh, local food shelter in Philly. So using the platform for good yes. as well. You know, our weird internet stars... It does somehow always return to giving back to the children. Like the yes. Aguilar guy. Uh, fair enough. You know, like the, the, so people at least know how to, to use their uh, weird internet fame for for something good. Hey, I'll say, I think that puts him on the ballot for uh, <laughs> community member of the year for us for the Hall of Fame in February. <laughs> I thought you meant the actual ballot. Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah. <laughs> 2024 is right around the corner. It's not too late. <laughs> Uh, but make sure you guys are following us at underground PHI on Twitter and Instagram. Follow Matt on Twitter at Matt Castorina. Follow me at KBIZZL311. Subscribe to the podcast feed on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. We are there. Uh, really helps the show continue to grow if you subscribe. I've been saying, Matt, too, you know, Thanksgiving right around the corners. Tell everybody to pull their phones out. Click the subscribe button while you're at the dinner table. It's a good conversation piece. And you don't have to bring up any of the awkward, you know, seasonal holiday conversations. You just talk Philly sports and you have a grand old time at the dinner table. Uh, also, subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com backslash at Underground Sports Philadelphia. Smash that like button. Smash the subscribe button. We're on that road to 1K. Uh, we need your help. So subscribe to our YouTube channel. Comment down below your thoughts on everything we talked about on tonight's show. Uh, ring the bell icon so you don't miss any of the content we're putting out there as well. And, uh, yeah, big thank you to our sponsors, Main Auto LLC, Security 21 Security Systems, Paul J. Gillespie Incorporated, the Dental Wellness Center of Vineland, Tomahawk Shades, Pickup, Kenwood Beer, Bino, and, of course, our merch partners at PHI Apparel Company. Use uh, code UNDERGROUND at phiapparel.co for 10% off your order from our merch partners over at PHI Apparel Company. This has been episode number 480, closing the book on the 2022 Red October editions of Underground Sports Philadelphia. For Matt and KB, until next time, we are signing off. Peace.